Hey everybody, my name is Kyle Thompson. Uh, I wanted to touch base with uh, each of you regarding a topic that has come up over the last 24, 36 hours related to uh, the city of Frankfurt and its uh, program to incentivize folks that meet certain criteria to move to the city of Frankfurt itself. Um, there's been a lot of talk online about uh, this is a dumb idea, this doesn't make sense, it's, you're just throwing money away, why don't you give money to local, to local businesses? I wanted to talk about the economics of how this works. This is in no way a socialist or liberal policy. It's not even really a Republican policy. It's what some people would call a classical Keynesian policy or one that would be espoused by Milton Friedman at this point. And I'll explain who those people are. But to understand why we're doing this, it's important that you understand that the city of Frankfurt actually is behind in every single statistical category of any contiguous county around us. When it comes to home ownership, we only have about 60% home ownership in the city of Frankfurt. At the same time, in Anderson County, they have 80% home ownership. In Owen County, they have over 75% home ownership. Shelby County is 71% home ownership. Franklin County is actually below the Kentucky state average of median wages, which should shock and surprise you as Kentucky is uh, considered to be one of the most impoverished states. 18% of our folks, uh, between 15 and 18% of our folks live below the poverty line. And um, about 9% of uh, our, the population in Frankfurt live below what would be considered extreme poverty, which is one half of the poverty line. You have 10% of the population in Frankfurt, about 3,000 people who are living below one half of the poverty line on an annual basis. You have a significant amount of children in this community, over 15%, close to 20% now of children who are living below the poverty line. Most of these children, the only food that they receive is the food that they get from the time that they're in schools. We have some economic issues. Um, our, uh, the median home value is actually um, significantly less here than say in um, uh, for sales. The median home value here is below $150,000. The median home value in Versailles is $212,000. You would say, well, I don't wanna live in a place where my home value, where it costs me more to, to buy a home. But if your home values are very low, um, that also means that you are not receiving the amenities and the things that you want uh, in your community as well, because you have, a, uh, you have lower taxes uh, overall that are coming in. Unfortunately, though, because the city of Frankfurt has had either stagnant growth or negative growth in most years since 2000, we have only experienced about a 1.2% growth since the year 2000. What that means is our tax base has stayed the same, right? The number of people living in our community has stayed the same. But the cost of things have gone up and what the government has had to provide, our local government has had to provide, has gone up. The cost of just um, the retirement systems and the benefits for government workers has gone up significantly. It's about 40% of, of the total value of their, of their whole incomes. And that goes up every single year. If, you're, if your base amount of people and incomes um, do not get any larger, and to be able to pay for the same stuff just to stay at the same level that we were at 25 years ago, you have to raise taxes because your, your tax base hasn't grown. And that's a basic economics thing there, that if the number of your population doesn't grow, your tax base doesn't grow, then your taxes have to increase. We have the highest tax rates in all of central Kentucky. There is no other community that has higher tax rates than us. And that should shock you, but it shouldn't surprise you because if we have had negative growth, then we have to figure out a way to spur on the economy. The first thing that we could do is we could have an economic policy where we could go after large corporations. And that doesn't happen overnight, but we are working on that. 
And you'll hear some announcements soon about some large retail in investments that are coming to the city of Frankfurt. But the other thing that we could do is we could spur on uh, economic growth quickly um, by bringing in high earning wagers to live in Frankfurt. Now, I've heard some people, uh, one realtor uh, in particular said this was the dumbest blank an idea he's ever heard, which kind of shocks me because as a realtor, you would want your property values in the area and you would want more properties in the area so that you could sell more properties and make more money. That's, a, that's basic economics. I had another individual who, I don't know if, if he graduated with a degree in economics after he went to seminary, but I do know that it doesn't sound like he understands economics because it's interesting that he is taking a, a hard stance on uh, the city of Frankfurt doing this when the state of Virginia um, has offered um, millions of dollars. I believe that they um, just um, elected a, a Republican governor over, over a Democrat there. Indiana, um, which is a staunchly uh, conservative state, um, has offered up to $50 million um, in their programs uh, to provide uh, remote workers. And in fact, over 300 uh, communities, 206 just on the, on the site that we use uh, to market us, but three, over 300 in the nation, including places like Wichita, Kansas, uh, Morgantown, uh, West Virginia. Morgantown, West Virginia will give you $20,000 to move there. All right. So what Frankfurt is doing is not out of the ordinary. In fact, it's, it's very common uh, to lure um, high earning uh, wages from people who can work remotely. Now, let's talk about why that is. In 2020, the, the idea of remote work was kind of foreign to everyone. But a worldwide pandemic caused us to get to a point where we had to actually consider that as a real possibility. And what we found was that a lot of companies, a lot of corporations, even the state, found that they had better productivity, they had less expenditures in those particular sectors if those employees were, were actually producing at the same rate. Now, in Frankfurt, the problem with that is that a lot of those people moved out of Frankfurt to work because they're working at home, because people drive in from other communities. They don't live in Frankfurt, but they work for the state. So it's important to us to figure out how to recapture some of that money. The city of Frankfurt balanced its budget last year by receiving essentially a $650,000 gift from the governor's office. Thanks, governor. But that would have been the only way that we could have balanced the budget. So you say, well, why don't you cut things? Well, what could we cut? At this point, the city of Frankfurt, when it comes to a lot of their, a lot of their operations, are running on shoestring budgets at this point. Now, could we spend less on large capital projects? 100%. I agree with you. I agree that there are things like a parking garage, a bridge, or other things that perhaps we're not super excited about. I'm not super excited about them either, but the local government decided to spend their money on that. Now, those are not upfront costs. Those are ongoing costs that we're going to have. But everything else, when it comes to the expenditures that we have, we have six police officers at, all, at any one time in the city of Frankfurt on duty. Six fire stations. You know, they, they've just increased their budget to, to be able to staff every single fire station in the city and also provide the EMS in the county. Our garbage collection, uh, at, at one point we were down to four garbage collectors working in the entire city and they were kicking tail because they were still being able to pick things up. What I'm getting at is that if we want to keep things the way that, just the way that they are, just to keep them static, taxes would have to be raised. And I'm not going to vote to raise taxes. So we have to figure out another way. If you're not going to raise taxes, then you have to increase the tax base. And so that's where this idea comes from. But if someone comes in and they make $100,000 a year, okay, then you can estimate 
what their economic impact on a community would be. Okay, so if they go out and they buy a two hundred thousand dollar home, this person, even if they're not married, they are looking for a home, and a two hundred thousand dollar home is a modest home in in today's world. It's not cheap. I'm not saying that, and I'm not saying it's necessarily affordable housing. I'm just saying that. From an economic standpoint, that is average, and in fact, the, the, that's the median cost. That's below the median cost of every surrounding county of, around us. But we'll use two hundred thousand dollars. If they have that two hundred thousand dollar home, they're going to have two thousand eight hundred and twenty eight dollars and seventy six cents in property taxes. That they're going to pay in the first year of home ownership. They're going to pay one thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars an occupational tax to the city and $1,000 in occupational tax to the county. They're also going to pay things that you don't think about that are taxes, the hidden taxes, if you will. One of those is uh, the insurance premium tax. The insurance premium tax is um, actually 1.95% in the uh, city of Frankfurt. And that would mean that if on their home alone, if they had, if they paid the insurance on their home, it is $1,500 a, a year. For that, and if they pay two hundred ten dollars a month for their car insurance for full coverage, they're going to end up paying about three hundred and fifty dollars, three hundred fifty dollars a year in insurance premium taxes. So at the end of one year, just one year, that a person has come into the city of Frankfurt, at a minimum, they are going to pay six or at least return six thousand one hundred and twenty-seven dollars. And 42 cents in local taxes. It pays for itself immediately in the first year. The money that we've outlaid, we're going to get back immediately. And then we're going to have another $100,000 earner making that money every single year. And all of those taxes are gravy on top of it. But I'll go one step further. There is a philosophy that came from a guy by the name of John Maynard Keynes. John Maynard Keynes was the father of what we would call macroeconomics. Macroeconomics is essentially, it focuses on the performance of economies. This is where you talk about uh, unemployment. This is where you talk about job participation rates, things of that nature, inflation, all those, all those factors. And when John Maynard Keynes came up with this idea, it was in 1936. Anybody that knows history, not a good time to be an economist uh, in 1936, except for the fact that John Maynard Keynes was trying to assist in explaining how we got into the Great Depression and what would get us out of the Great Depression. And one of the things that he talked about was the multiplier effect, okay? The multiplier effect is for every dollar that's actually spent, either by a government or by a corporation, is returned multifold based upon the fact that local Local shopping, local businesses uh, will receive that money, which employs more people, which brings in more taxes, which pays for more uh, businesses locally. And so John Maynard Keynes, the father of macroeconomics, was an individual that would espouse the idea that you have to spend a little money from a government perspective or a corporate perspective to be able to bring some money back. In fact, he actually talked about that in a book called The General Theory of employment, interest, and money. It was published in 1936. It transcended, it changed uh, economics wholly from that point forward. And in fact, a lot of people can point to that as to the reason um, that we got out of the Great Depression because of World War II. Whole other topic we'll talk about some other time. But after John Maynard Keynes, um, who is considered the most important um, economist in the 20th century. The second most important was a guy by the name of Milton Friedman. Okay, Milton Friedman, Friedman would be somebody we would call a libertarian in today's world. He did not believe that the government should get involved at all unless it was to protect the survival of its citizenry. In Frankfurt, the average age is 41 years old. In Scott County, it's 32 years old. We have an aging community. That's 10 years. That's an average. We have an aging community. We have a lot of retirees. We have a lot of people who have homestead exemptions that are not paying full amounts on their property, which is great. They've earned it. 
But if we don't have those monies, then we have to figure out where those additional incomes are coming. And to actually have negative growth on your population, you got to work to do that. You got you got to almost mean to do that. And that's not what you want. So what Milton Friedman would say, who was actually an opponent of he, he didn't agree necessarily with a lot of Keynesian thought, but he actually said that in his uh, 1962 book, uh, Capitalism and Freedom, which eventually won him the Nobel Prize in uh, economics, the government should stay out of matters of economics only and only involve itself uh, when absolutely necessary for the survival of its people. But he ended that section of his book, the very last section of his book that he had, by saying an extra dollar earned is always a means for more money available to be expended. If we bring in $100,000 earners, that's going to be more money to spend. So using that multiplier effect, the thing that got us out of World War II, you can actually consider the idea that if someone has $100,000 and moves into the city of Frankfurt, an average family of four will spend $7,428 on groceries alone in a year. Okay? That's 2022 numbers. So you can imagine even a family of two, those numbers are probably pretty close now knowing that the value of, uh, what the value of groceries are. Also, across the country, 61% of all expenditures are spent locally. 61%. So using that idea of, of the leftover after you pay your taxes and all of your, your bills, that would leave $43,920 to be spent locally in our community. Now, I want you to think about that. $43,000 pushed into the economy of Frankfurt just from a sales perspective, will fundamentally change a lot of businesses. But it'll also have that multiplier effect. Those local businesses are able to hire more people. They're able to pay higher wages, which means that they don't have to increase the amount of taxes that every one of you all don't want to happen. Everyone wants certain things from government. We want a pool. We want something for our kids to do. We want local attractions. Those things cost money, and we can't balance the budget as it is right now. But look at a city like Elizabethtown. Elizabethtown has 29,000 people in it. Guess how many Frankfurt has? 29,000 people. The city of Frankfurt has a $43 million budget. The city of Elizabethtown has an $80 million budget. Same amount of people, lower tax rates. Why is that? It's because they have more people in their community who are working at higher wages. It's estimated that over the next five years that 82 million people will go into the remote work aspect of their job, at least part-time remote work. We have to adapt. And the city of Frankfurt can't sit back and wait to see what every other community has done or sit back and say, that's not the way that we've always done it. Or, I'm jealous of that person getting money, not thinking that by them coming in here, it's going to benefit all of us. It's going to keep your taxes lowered. It's going to increase the amount of money spent in our local community, which is a major benefit to our small business. And then at the end of the day, it's going to attract more people, better schools, better skills. And then eventually you'll have what we really need, which is major economic changes when it comes to larger corporations. That's when you can see true economic change. This is not my plan. I did not come up with this plan, but it was passed by the city commission. And I have to look at what are the, the benefits and what are the negatives of this. The negatives, well, there's $5,000 we'd have to spend. Except for the fact that every other state that has done this has seen a significant economic impact to the positive since they have done it. I encourage you to go look. The Wall Street Journal, the, the Business Journal, if you look at, there is a study of the impact of wages done by uh, George Mason University um, and the University of Virginia, uh, the University of Chicago. By providing incentives to come to your community, 
you actually will bring more dollars in than you will ever give out. And $5,000 is significantly less than other places, even in Kentucky, that are offering for these particular jobs. People understand that the world of economics, macroeconomics and microeconomics are shifting dramatically. And so we have to be on the cutting edge of that. It's one of the reasons that the, the city supported the plant board in becoming a, a, a gig city so that we had, we had a uh, one gigabyte of information for these workers to be able to work uh, remotely. Do I like spending money knowing how tight the budget is? I'm not a huge fan of it. What I am a huge fan of is the fact that it's worked everywhere. You can't deny that. You can't deny that Republican and Democrat states have actually both seen positive impacts of this. The the Trump administration and the Biden administration both agree with the Bureau of Labor Statistics that these incentive packages actually work. And could we spend that money in other ways? Absolutely we can. But would, would we get the same return in investment? And that I don't think you can do. I don't know any investment where you can put your money in and get more than 100% of your money back in one year. And then the next year, get another 100%. And then the next year, get another 100%. And that, by bringing in just 20 new people that would meet this standard, it's $120,000 in local taxes that are bringing in. And that's a big difference. At the same time, if you bring in 20 new employees, you're talking about $850,000 probably closer to a million dollars in local spending in Frankfort and Franklin County at our stores. Heck, you're talking about $140,000 just being spent at our local grocery stores. Those are all ideas that you have to think outside the box on. But don't attack every idea that comes out of the city commission because this commission is actually trying to do something. We're trying to do things a little bit different. But what we can do is we can bring these individuals in, ease the burden on government, allow us to have a bonding capacity, then we can go to the state, we can go to the county, we can go to private organizations, and we can build the things that we truly want. We can't do that when we're just balancing the budget at zero every year. So in conclusion, I hope you guys will understand that nothing in government is perfect. I hope that those of you who have supported me in the past will trust me that this will eventually um, turn out to be a good thing for Frankfurt. And those of you who don't, and those of you who don't support me, and those of you who very vocally don't support me, will be, I would hope that you would sit back and not be negative about everything about this community. This community deserves better. This community deserves better than the negative attitude that so many of our leaders have had for the last 164 years. It's time that we have a fundamental change in the way that we think about approaching ideas. And that means that we have to be bold, and that means that we have to take risks, and it means that we have to do things that are within our best interest. And that doesn't mean we do things that are within our individual leader's best interest, which has always happened. We have to do what's best for the community of Frankfurt. And I think this is a program that will do that. There'll be more, they'll be coming along, there'll be new ideas that you guys will see. You can't change and you can't build Rome uh, in one day. You can surely tear it down though. And unfortunately, tearing down the people in this community who are trying very hard doesn't get anywhere if it's backed up by economics. And we have to have this discussion about things like that. Just trust me. Trust me that there is an economic reason that over 300 large cities and small cities across the country are doing this. And because of that, I want you to know that I believe this is a good thing for the city of Frankfurt. I didn't come up with it. It's not my idea. But I'll support it because it looks like it'll help us. With that, I'll talk to you all soon.